We're going to go it's lunch uh, time. That, yeah, it's lunch. Well, no, actually it's G, <laughs> so it's still not quite lunch. It's, it's a discussion regarding criteria for a grant program. Any? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, cool. Then. Did you say that again? I wasn't. It was the. It's it's kind of our last item in the morning, typically. Where is there any discussion regarding criteria? Oh yeah, for a grant I had some questions about that actually. It, Please. Yeah. Uh, not the the criteria per se, but how we do this in the department. I've had some people call me who were trying to get a planning grant, and they were told by someone in the department to use a consultant, and the con they did everything uh. the consultant said, and they were turned down. And then they called up again, and they got a new consultant that the department recommended, and then they got the grant. So how do we recommend consultants, or what do, what's the relationship between our staff and applicants, and how does that work? I don't think we recommend consultants, but someone... I didn't know that we recommended oh, consultants. <laughs> <laughs> you said it. It was news to me. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like news to this applicant, too. So I'm just here to curious about that. It would not be our standard practice to recommend consultants, and I'm, I'm not aware of that practice taking place. Um, we do know that there are some people out there who are willing to help applicants. I'm not aware that we have recommended, and I'll look into that for you, but uh, I'm not aware of that practice ever taking place. What we do do with the applications is the same as any set of, of grants. They okay. come in, they're read by a series of readers, and then the scores will indicate well who's funded and who's not funded. Okay, that's what I was told, yeah. so I don't. I, that's why I'm asking here, because I, I didn't know we did that. I'm not aware you that we do either. You didn't know we did that either. No. <laughs> so, uh, I don't think that means we it did do it. I mean, I think you're saying you'll look into it, but yeah. it's okay. not an so, acknowledgment. Uh, it's, that not, it's not something that's our standard practice. Okay, well, maybe we should have a conversation. <laughs> we'll check into it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that would be good. Okay. This, right, this was an opportunity for me to ask the question, so yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Thank cool. you. Now we're we just at lunch. We called to order <laughs> approval of State Board of Ed minutes, approval of the minutes of the regular committee of the whole meeting of August 9th, 2011. That's where I got the 9th next up before. I move approval. Support. Moved by John, supported by Nancy. Any corrections, comments? Blah, blah. All in favor, aye. 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 All, uh, opposed? <laughs> I think we had three of us that agreed. I don't know that everybody did. I did. Oh, okay. <laughs> John, President's report. Just a couple things. Um, the board and department, we've, uh, we've long been promoting um, accelerated early college credit taking, dual enrollment, early college, middle college, expansion of effective high school reform models including our recommendations to the governor and legislature earlier this year. And you know, a lot of that um, uh, effort was uh, articulated in part in the governor's special message on education around any time, any place, any pace, including virtual and blended learning options, which we also have been encouraging. Uh, there is another governor's special message coming uh, on talent and workforce, which uh, the department, Mike, I know Patty can too, and many of the staff here are involved with and I and others have been strongly, again, encouraging uh, using that uh, to be a vehicle to put more specifics and put more gubernatorial juice and emphasis behind, okay, how are we going to revise dual enrollment so that it's an incentive to have more kids participate uh, and expand participation and uh, make sure the colleges cooperate in accepting credits? How do we use it to expand uh, effective uh, STEM, you know, science, technology, math, career themed programming, uh, expand early and middle college opportunities, all the ways of creating effective learning venues that bridge that secondary, post-secondary venue. So I wanted everybody to know that that's going on and there's a lot of good opportunity, I think, to um, have the, the governor's next message, which also will be dealing with adult workforce and job retraining and you know talent networking, uh, be a, another way to be more specific and promote those kinds of uh, blended learning, uh, early college credit taking, and I'm just very excited about seeing us do more of that. So I wanted to make sure you, you are seeing that opportunity and knowing that a lot of people here are working on that as well. Um, I know Kathy and Marianne, you know, you, you've been participating in some school health and obesity national summit tiering, and there's a big obesity summit here, right, that you're going to represent us. Is there anything more you want to say about those agendas right now? 
uh, in terms of what you're seeing real briefly? Well, here at our school health committee meeting a couple weeks ago, we focused on the physical education, physical activity part of healthy living. Uh, that, that obesity is a, pr a product not only of unhealthy eating, but lack of physical activity. And uh, at this conference we were at in Washington, they also stressed physical activity. And it's more than just physical education. And physical education should be more than just dodgeball or something. You know, it should be education as well as physical. But that there should be physical activity throughout the day. And one of the things is that it's in teacher preparation programs, the te teachers in training should be taught how to incorporate physical activity into their lesson plans so that kids move around, especially elementary school kids, move around every hour of the day, not just uh, recess. Or, and and you, you were saying that, that you, you saw a study about it in Indiana, in Indiana or I think you said, uh, where we were told that recess before lunch is much more effective than recess after lunch. And Dan told me he saw a study that showed that recess before studying reading has led to increased uh, achievement score, improved achievement scores because kids are more ready reading. to learn. They're, they're, they've got the exercise out of their system and they're, they're all charged up, ready to learn. So I think we've, we've really focused, there's a lot of focus on obesity and the, the, the diabetes result is one of the reasons. But it's also very expen it's expensive. It costs the country a lot of money in health care costs to maintain people on diabetes and the numbers have been increasing dramatically over the years. And weight control is very important. Uh, th this conference in Washington focused not only on school districts but on municipalities and we heard some interesting stories about what some of the cities have been doing. But the whole idea of, of combining both uh, healthy eating, healthy nutrition, and our standards are considered very good, uh, our nutrition standards, but also we're going to present in another couple of months a new a revised physical education policy for the board to consider. So we're looking at both, and I think that's one of the things why I assume they're going to be talking about the governor's uh, conference on obesity as well, child obesity. So it's really quite a national issue at this point, and it's one way of, of getting a handle on health care costs, which is essential in order if we're going to do anything with the budget and the deficit. Thank you for uh, so helping lead our work. It's all tied together. It's not just some esoteric thing that we... We, we're doing this for fun or something. It's really critical. And it means that if, if children are healthy, they will perform better in school and their scores will go up. So, yeah. Could I just add one thing? Um, along with the whole recess paradigm, the, um, there's a problem in a lot of schools where um, Recess has been cut out mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. of this urgency to uh, study and work on tests. And um, but it's it's just the reverse. It's totally counterproductive. And by um, uh, punishing kids by taking away recess or um, eliminating it for test taking purposes, either way is wrong and uh, again counterproductive but um, the one thing I found these people are playing for keeps <laughs> they're not playing around these people and being the, all the the people from around the country uh, who are at this conference and uh, the foundations who are supporting <laughs> and everything they're um, th and this isn't just healthy eating in schools or better school lunches, it's whole communities that uh, are being... I, I told uh, you, I, last time I think I spoke at the uh, No Child Left Indoors Michigan <laughs> Conference, yeah. which is a pretty energetic yeah. group of yeah. outdoors educators, uh, environmental people who are determined to get the kids outside learning, 
not in front of their computers. So there is a good movement. L last thing, you know, we talked at our retreat about uh, developing uh, policies or clarity around communication, state board members, media, uh, our public <coughs> interactive. We had a small committee discussion yesterday about those ta topics and I think we'll be continuing that discussion and bringing back some recommendations on how we enhance our communication with, uh, and, uh, with our publics uh, perhaps next time. Well, one of the maps we saw in Michigan is one of the, is in the group of heaviest, uh, most obese states which is not something to be proud of. And there was one, the mayor of a city, Oklahoma City, talk, was one of the speakers who talked about his city was one of the obese cities and he was very concerned about it. And he had involved the entire community, all the stakeholders, very community involved program. They had a challenge for the citizens of Oklahoma City to collectively lose one million pounds in a year. <laughs> and they, they had this great program, the walking program that tied into building sidewalks and upgrading sidewalks, and all kinds of and paths and bike paths, and just changing the whole mindset of the city. And uh, when, they had, when they reached 500,000 pounds that they all lost, they had a big celebration and they were geared for the next 500,000 pounds. So big it was really a big community activity. They, they created a whole more active community. They attracted business. They attracted tourists. They, they attracted national attention. It was a great thing. So, you know, it's, it could be made to be fun as well as uh, healthy. This is not a good thing to hear about because yesterday I was on a conference call with the governor about autism um, uh, with the Kelly Foundation and the governor apparently had his physical yesterday morning and it had to wait to lose. So uh, he's talking about buying scales for the capital and I assured <laughs> him that nothing that he could do to the State Board of Education would have us putting a, a, a weight dashboard with our own personal weight <laughs> <laughs> on the internet because apparently he's planning to lose weight via, with, with coverage on the internet. So I oh warn you now. Uh, <laughs> oh, the governor when you go into all these dinners right. and eating all this crummy food. <laughs> I know, and it didn't work. I think we should do a couple more. Last thing I'll say is Eileen reminded me. I think some Ann Arbor Regional Business Leadership Group has a impact summit yeah, where they're, they're focusing on all the influence that Ann Arbor uh, Region, Washtenaw County, has in Lansing, what's going on in Lansing and various topics. And I was encouraging them. They asked me to talk. But I said, you know, you've got two um, uh, Republican, Democratic, uh, alleged pseudo leader types who live in Ann Arbor. Uh, why don't you have us both uh, talk? And so I think Eileen agreed. I think Skubik's going to moderate you and me uh, well, I, I, talking about I, education <laughs> policy. Yeah, I hate to say it, but I've been asked to go someplace else, oh. uh, far away out of state, truly, for education. And I have an email in here, and I thought, oh, no, it's the same day. But I haven't agreed to either one just because I haven't sorted that all out. Well, but I hope you can make it. I look forward to our, our routine uh, The hot air would be magnificent. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, John. Yeah. Exactly. Not I. I'm going to shorten mine, but I, I do want to show you a little bit about, uh, if you haven't had a chance to see the podcast yet, but this is the group that actually we met with. Uh, when I say I met with them, I mean, I kind of sat here and they were all there, but our entire staff was here, and these were teachers from all over the state, including one from uh, UP that couldn't quite get here on a timely basis. So it was funny. He was sitting in the TV at the end of the table, and you do start to, after a while, kind of think he's right there. You know, it's, it's <laughs> interesting how that works. Um, but, I, but the clip I wanted to show, it, it, it is the same that's in a podcast. We, we, we picked, uh, Marty and Mike and some others helped pick a uh, uh, Flint teacher, uh, one from uh, the Conning or Coning or uh, Inkster, and then we wanted to show one from Sutton's Bay because it's a coincidence that today a few times blended learning came up, and I think it's misunderstood. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and at any rate, here, I think it was it was a great experience. It was three and a half hours. Uh, people ended up starting to have a conversation. This is where education has done its typical dance: online learning, credit recovery. Yeah, put everybody there. We need to go to the middle. We need to go to that blended instruction model. 
And we need to remember that blended doesn't mean some classes online and some that are traditional. It means we need to blend the technology in everything we do. We've asked our administration to hyper-focus all our professional development on how the teachers can best utilize that technology. We're looking at flipping instruction, especially the math teachers. Don't listen to the lecture in class and go struggle with the homework at home. Listen to the lecture at home and come get one-on-one -on -one support in class with the problems. Here we're, we'll share some of these over time. There's a lot of nuggets of uh, wisdom. And I thought at the same time, rather than like a pep rally for teachers, you have to sometimes just show real teachers and what they're doing. We're going to try to incorporate that in different work, speeches, podcasts, uh, online. Because then I think even the most, uh, you know, Kathy's point earlier, a legitimate one about the feeling at least of fashion, which is hard not to feel. I mean, I hear it from my daughter. Um, it, it certainly starts to change the dynamic if larger numbers of people actually see the kind of top-notch talent that's in our classroom. And these weren't selected, you know, they didn't go out and like get the best and the brightest, whatever that would mean anyway. These are random kind of selections. So it's really, it was just uh, inspiring. And then I found myself after a while, uh, we'll try to mimic this in other ways, but before you know it, yeah, technically it's advice for superintendent. I just listened to a conversation for three and a half hours, you know, after they felt a little more comfortable. And it's almost better because then it's, it's I don't want to say more authentic, but it's authentic. It's not like they're feeling they're being judged or watched. And, you know, it's just this conversation going on with things we wouldn't have thought about asking. Mark helped facilitate pieces to kind of keep it moving, but in general it was very open, and we'll, we'll share more with you down there. But the blended, I think, I kind of think Cassandra alluded to this earlier. Some people think that's almost an, an online, and it's really blended is what you heard. That was uh, Cindy Crandall from Sutton's Bay. Um, and that's where I think a lot of our teaching is going to head. It's not going to be either online or traditional. It's going to be blended. And then one other thing, I, I, I'm not going to go, I already gave the shout out to Dan. I really thought it was, he was just great in Detroit and really hit a nerve. and. Uh, but the other thing, and introducing Paul, who's next up, I just want to say this: things work in mysterious ways. Last night, I was at an orientation. I'm doing mentoring, and I was at an orientation to try to figure out how they wanted to have us work in that in that role. And I came home, and I think I might have shared this with you before. After I had cancer surgery a few years ago, uh, Eleanor Jositis came up here and actually gave me a rosary, which in our Catholic tradition is the big deal. And it was, it's the kind that wasn't traditional that Catholics would know, or maybe even some of you would know that aren't, but it was a round one where you could theoretically, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a metal one. So I get home and it's gone. I, I, I've had it with me since she gave it to me. I was really upset. And then I thought, well, where have I been the day? So I, I'll finish this one in a minute. I'll finish. Mm -hmm. I'll finish it when Paul's done. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Well, as um, as an opportunity here for uh, the Michigan Teacher of the Year report, as uh, you read in the uh, in the board packet, it's been um, it's been very very busy, which is wonderful and fantastic uh, in the education piece. As we listened to a uh, presentation, you know, this morning, uh, looking at how instruction is delivered, and and, and we saw pieces of that when, when we look with that. Um, I think that that's more and more important as we pull these things together. And we've been doing some things uh, with entrepreneurship in Michigan. We're just at the very beginning looking at the different areas, what might be available for it, and looking at that entrepreneurship, uh, entrepreneurial mindset, if you will. And across all of CTE, I'm in the Business Management, Marketing, and Technology program, so it fits perfectly in there when we look at that. And so uh, Patty Cantu, along with her staff, and we've had several meetings, and we met once with... Uh, with uh, Superintendent Flanagan uh, talking about this, and this is an initiative, um, entrepreneurial learning initiative, um, that's uh, part of the Kauffman Foundation. And it's an online piece that we're looking at, and we have a lot of work that needs to be done. But again, it's that type of thinking that we're looking at. How can we deliver that mindset, if you will, before we get down to the nuts and bolts of what some of the coursework would be? And so um, I think that that's uh, something that has been interesting, particularly to me. And currently at our technical campuses, we've been able to offer, as I think I've mentioned before, uh, we have an entrepreneurship program where students <laughs> get 12 direct college credits 
well in our program learning the other material and so they're already in that program of study when they leave they've got 12 college credits already completed as they walk out is the ending of their senior year with that information and we're also doing a pilot program with Northwood University so our focus with what we're trying to do is to move this forward and look at those opportunities uh, like was mentioned earlier when you're dealing with uh, preparing students with the college credit. I also in August had a great opportunity and I think that same study that was mentioned here about the physical activity and increasing scores and I, I learned some wonderful things from some of the teachers that were there. I, I attended the uh, State Educational Technology Directors Association meeting with Bruce Umstead and, uh, his, and his team and it was fantastic to learn about some of the different things that were being done. Uh, we had math teachers that were working with phys ed teachers and student scores were going up because not only were they doing things prior to learning the math or the reading, but while they were learning the math and the reading and some very powerful techniques that um, if you think outside the box, uh, bottom line is if it's helping kids get better and, and learn and achievement go up, that's really what's important. So we had uh, a, great, a great conference there. Um, at the end of August, I was able to meet with uh, Governor Schneider, and I want to thank uh, Barb Fardell for uh, making those arrangements. Uh, we had a brief meeting, but alluded to some of the things that you had talked about um, when we explained what we were doing with CTE and gave him some of those examples of the students earning credit while they're in high school and doing that right alongside their curriculum there and uh, looking at the task force and the talent in Michigan and where that needs to go. So I'm interested in seeing exactly how that plays out and uh, what, what would happen there uh, was, was a great opportunity to meet with the governor. Um, I had a great end of the summer, if you will. Uh, I had the opportunity, privilege, if you will, to chaperone uh, youth uh, from the southeast uh, quadrant of the state to World Youth Day in Spain. Wow. And it was an amazing opportunity, and I just have to say, uh, through my 20-some-plus years of education, when you go out on field trips locally, you have a lot of things that can <laughs> occur. Here we were in Spain, we were in Madrid, and we were in Barcelona, and I have to say this group of young people were just fantastic. It was a pleasure to work with them, and, and uh, so not only did we have the uh, activities that were related uh, in Madrid, for World Youth Day, but we were able to go on to Barcelona and there was a lot of learning that went on in terms of the architecture that was there, the, um, the beautiful um, uh, experience for the students, uh, we were able to go to the Prada Museum, I mean just some fantastic things personally that I was able to experience along with the students and uh, it's, it's always nice to see some of those seeds being planted with them as they then continue to grow because it certainly was a life-changing experience for me so I can only expect uh, what, what it was for them as well. Um, a couple things that are happening at our campus, we're up and running, the rooms are full, the kids are there, they're excited uh, as things are settling down and one of the nice things that we try to do with our students, particularly at the uh, technical uh, campus there at, uh, in Royal Oak and all four of the campuses in Oakland County, is set their goal and set the bar for them for the national certifications that they have the ability to earn in all of our areas within CTE, particularly in the business area, we have lots of IT certifications the business, the management, the entrepreneurship, like I'd mentioned before in terms of college credit. But it's really always a nice uh, a new beginning for the students as they come in as juniors and seniors and kind of lay the land of, of what's happening and to sit there in front of a group of seniors and saying, you know, may I be here before you know it. And then the mm -hmm. next state of planning in your life is what are you going to do beyond. And, and to work with them in their programs of study is always exciting. Uh, as we hope to continue and bottle up all that energy that's here at the beginning of September and carry it through the school year so that they have uh, some great opportunities for them once they leave, um, leave uh, the high school setting and then move on to uh, further education. Um, I too was very pleased to have the opportunity to be the, at the meeting which were several of you were with uh, Secretary of Education Arnie Duncan. I thought there was uh, some fantastic conversation that occurred that was there. It was great, you know, for myself to be in the audience and hear the opportunities, the challenges, the directions that were what we're looking to do. And, you know, I want to thank uh, the staff here for making that happen so that I could be there and experience that with, uh, with everybody because I think that those are some great opportunities to share and what I really liked about it was that there was a lot of different themes going on there that was happening but what I liked about was the part that we were emphasizing and, and Secretary uh, Duncan as well the, the, the parent partnership I mean he wants to try to partner but we've got to have the parent uh, partnership that's involved in, and uh, that's important I think we need to continue to move that forward because we, we all have a role in educating our youth 
Um, and so I'd like to hear the, the different suggestions that were available uh, for us to pursue. I really, coming from a classroom teacher standpoint, would have liked to have heard from one of the teachers in that setting. I know there was representation of the teachers that was on the panel, but I would have liked to have hear, hear uh, what that individual might have had to say. But obviously there's only so much time and so many opportunities for people to be there. But um, I thought that that was great. And really a neat piece that happened from that um, Rob Stevenson and uh, Matinga Ragatz were also in the audience. So mm -hmm. I was able to, to, to connect with uh, Rob, who I'd never met before, mm -hmm. wonderful person, mm -hmm. does some great things. I, I know many of you know him and Matinga as well. And the great part of that was um, we had our morning together, but then we were able to, um, they accompanied back to my campus. And oh. we did an afternoon tour of all of the cluster areas that are available in the building. They saw everything. and. And um, I'd like to extend uh, maybe an opportunity at some point in this calendar year to uh, have you as our guests uh, down to the technical campus as a board of education, and we'll work through those. But I'd like to make an uh, open opportunity for, uh, for you to come visit and see. And I thought the highlight was is that my class, they were the benefactor of it. It was right before our second session started that they both, uh, Rob and Matinga, were able to address the class. And so they got to talk with them and see that. And I just thought that that was really a great opportunity. And it was wonderful to spend the afternoon with them and share uh, what it is that we're doing there for the students and what the students are achieving um, at the technical campus. And so hopefully we'll be able to have an afternoon or so or whatever would be available in your schedules to potentially be at the campus. Um, I think you mentioned to me this morning that even if it didn't accommodate everyone at once, you'd you'd take anyone that could meet a certain you'd accommodate Absolutely. Their schedule. Absolutely, we'd be happy to yeah. if it needed to be in a couple different times. I know everybody has different schedules, but I'll start working with that, and we'll put some dates out there and what would be available. And we would love to have all of you down there <coughs> to, to see what's happening yeah. at the technical campus and uh, get to see what the students are doing. Mm -hmm. Um, the last bit that was not in my report, um, I, uh, I, I'm a high school basketball coach as well as a teacher, and uh, the past 13 years we have hosted a, um, a what we call the Knights Basketball Coaching Academy because my very first high school that I coached at, they were named uh, the Knights, and so we oh. just carried that through. But over the years we've, we've worked on various community projects and we've partnered with Coaches Versus Cancer. And so this particular Saturday, we'll have uh, coaches from across Michigan, Canada. We'll get them out of the Midwest. And uh, it does a couple things for us. It's professional development for those people that are working with our, uh, with our athletes, uh, basketball coaches in particular. But it's a way that uh, we can certainly raise awareness uh, for cancer and coaches versus cancer organization and American Cancer Society. Uh, help me put this together and sponsor with it. And so uh, we have that uh, this, this upcoming Saturday. So we hope that we'll be able to continue to uh, contribute toward uh, cancer research. Goodness. Thank you. What do you do in your spare time? <laughs> <laughs> you need anyway. to grab a couple hours of sleep. <laughs> anyway, before. Um, Goodness, that's great. Thank you. What, Kath? Oh, she just said that's great. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, before I was interrupted by Paul, <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to make a point here. And, uh, but what happened is, so Eleanor, who passed away last month, as you know, and, and Focus Hope and all of her stuff, I always kind of thought of her more from when I was a kid, that she'd be like the Pope S if there ever was a, a woman Pope. And uh, at any rate, so I lost this, and, and I tried a couple of different ways, went through the car this morning, called back to places, but I think I, I was too many places yesterday, and it probably, you know, flipped out. And at any rate, so the, the mysterious ways is, so Paul comes in this morning, says, I've been at the, at the, world, uh, at the uh, world Youth Day, world youth day and, uh, and I got something for you, blessed by the Pope, and it was a rosary. Oh, oh, oh my the, gosh. What's... The odds, right? Yeah, exactly. That's amazing. Eleanor uh, looking out. I was going to say, a gift from the Pope S. Huh? That's yeah, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> through her, that's through right. her new... Uh, well, <laughs> thanks, Paul. Cemetery. I appreciate that very much. You're welcome. He didn't know. Well, obviously. <laughs> Unless he stole it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that thing up for you. No, I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> Smart well. guy. Oh, the other was a little metal, <laughs> and it was blessed, so <coughs> harder to lose. So thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Uh, yeah, the other one will turn up, you know. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay, I failed. Okay. 
Well, then you'll get this back, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll have one in each pocket? <laughs> yeah, one in each year. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Double be, coverage. can never be too blessed. Huh? <laughs> so uh, public participation, we did that. Thank you. And we're to uh, item K. This is where the discussion action item part of the meeting. And uh, item K is the approval of new cut scores on the Michigan Educational Assessment Program and Michigan Merit Exam to be consistent with career and college readiness. Is there a motion? I think it was moved by Richard and supported by Eileen. Um, Nancy? I, you know, over lunch I was trying to think back as we sat through the agenda setting session on this, and I hope we didn't do a disservice by pushing the, the uh, staff to put this on in the morning as an information item and then as a as an item to be discussed and voted or item to be voted on this afternoon. Originally it was set for it to just to be on the the discussion action section because everyone was clear that it had been discussed in February. And we encouraged them to put it on in the morning because it was important we felt since so much time had elapsed to have um, have that regurgitation, if you will, of all of the information again to make certain that everybody was at the same point again before we took that vote. And I think that was the intent at that time. It just never occurred to me, and this is what happens when you're part of the conversation and other people aren't. Um, it didn't occur to me that, that what we would potentially do is to create more um, confusion than we cleared up. And so, um, uh, John, I don't know if you remember that as well, but I do remember that, that we thought we were clearing up confusion in doing that. <laughs> well, and I, I just wanted to also reiterate, I mean, I'm going to, it's important that we follow through on setting the proficiency bar in the right place. I do think it's a very legitimate point that when we took that decision in February, the exact recipe, you know, for how we would do that. Uh, would emerge and we got it last week. Uh, we did uh, decide to attempt to get it and act on it in uh, a expedited fashion. But I do think it's uh, so it, it is I am persuaded by what we've learned and what we've seen that this is a um, effort. The recipe that was presented then is a good proxy for the target that we're trying to hit of college and career readiness. Uh, that is making sure that we're uh, setting that bar in the right place. So I think it's important. I think I'm going to support it. I do think, though, it is important, and I will take responsibility for advocating for this, that as we bring forward in the future, in part because we don't want to delay the meet and we do not want to create any uncertainty about us moving forward on this, I think it's really imperative that we um, provide time when we bring forward complex uh, decisions and pieces of material that we allow time for the public scrutiny of it uh, in the future and that's something that I will certainly pledge to advocate for so we are not um, sort of boxing people into feeling that they're making a decision without sort of fully understanding or uh, being comfortable with it. However, um, I think that's not going to change, this, this proposal is not going to change and the outcome of supporting it I don't sense has changed so I think delay would not serve any purpose and I would uh, promote us moving ahead. Any other comments? Well, well, I'd like to reiterate for the record what I said earlier at the Committee of the Whole that our policy is to present for discussion at one meeting and to vote on that issue at the next meeting. And we have been ignoring that a number of major issues and I just on principle, and it's in our bylaws, we put this in our bylaws, and we had a big discussion about it when we did this. It was very seriously thought out, and I, I'm just not prepared to vote on it today. I, I have supported <coughs> higher expectations and higher standards and high school graduation requirements, and the idea of, of accurate cut scores that are really giving us the right picture, but. Uh, I think it's just against our policy to do this, and I'm, I, I cannot vote on it today. You know, I'd like to Marianne. add, too, if, if there was an option at the agenda setting meeting to 
hold this off until October, um, I don't see why we can't be doing that. No, there was never that option. <coughs> well, what was it? The what option was to not have it on discussion first thing in the morning, but rather just put it on to vote in the afternoon. Oh, okay. And we, didn't we wanted to have it on for discussion in the morning as well. Well, I still feel uh, we need uh, more input from the field on this. I think it, it, it has um, the whole um, recipe, as you say. <laughs> yeah. It's just come too quickly and there hasn't been time for input. <coughs> yes. I, I think we need to be clear here that, that this input that the field might have would require people to have um, the technical ability to to um, respond to it. Exactly. And the field doesn't. Exactly. The well, field I, doesn't. I, There's there some psychometricians that are that there, but even the ones that I've talked spoken with in, in Oakland and in let's see, it's at Oakland and Genesee, Oakland and Macomb, they've agreed that there are very few people in the state that could ever respond to this at this level. And they're quite comfortable with it. Um, and so I think that we need to be clear. I have heard from them. I'd like to hear from them. That, that's so fine. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying that this is not something that is, um, this is not something that, um, and it, it, there's some very scientific ways in which you look at this. There's some very scientific calculations that you do this. And no matter what state you're in, no matter what business you're in, when you do something like this, there is a, there is a protocol that has to be followed that you can't alter, and it doesn't make any difference. And so you can hear from people till the cows come home, but the protocol is still there. I think so the public still needs that sort of input, and the public uh, what are they going to input needs to hear it, and they need to know uh, if there are any options. That's all. Okay, and okay. I don't see the problem with. Uh, with doing that. If that's all, if that's, I shouldn't say all like that's not important, that isn't my point. If that is what you're after, I understand that, Marianne. Well, I think I've, but I've said that. Well, but you said they need to, they need morning. to come up with additional options, and no, I, 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 I misunderstood that. they might okay. have that. Okay, got it. Any further discussion on the motion? A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Same. Aye. I, I want to abstain. Okay. Should we do a, a roll call? Is that? Yeah. I think that's okay. a good idea. Yeah. Um, no. Uh huh. Mertz, you want to handle it? Mm -hmm. Yes. For the reason stated, Austin? <coughs> yes. Danhoff? Yes. McGuire? No. Strauss? Abstain. Albrich? Yes. Barner? Yes. Weiser? Yes. Siley? Yes. Thank you. Motion carried. I, I would just like to add, though, I would request that we follow Dan's recommendation that we communicate this in a way yep. that is uh, intelligible <laughs> and helpful. Can you say that again, please? I, I'm sorry. I said I, I would recommend, though, that we follow Dan's recommendation and communicate this in a way that is... Mm -hmm. um, oh, I agree. I don't know what the word I'm looking for is, but... Uh, Positive? Wholesome? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think those are quite... Um, it, it just that it's, it's uh, you know, it's appropriate in that uh, it is what it is, but it's not what it's not. If that makes any sense no, whatsoever. No, I, I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, no, I hear what you're saying. It has to be explained in understandable English. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the things we heard at this conference, there was a presentation on getting the message out about all this healthy stuff. And with the idea was not to talk in jargon to, to the public. And uh, one gentleman talked to me, the, the mayor pro tem of Houston, and he talked about some of his experiences, and one of them was he was speaking at a school, and they asked, what's a mayor? What do you mean mayor pro tem? What, is, what does that mean? And he gives them a long explanation, and one kid raises his hand and says, oh, you mean you're really plan B? 
I mean, I've been, I'm just saying, if we're going to explain this to people, it better be an understandable Plan B language or something so that people understand it because uh, it's giving, the, the, this whole business of this career ready stuff is giving a very bad impression of mm -hmm. schools that are not as bad as they, that, 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 as that sounds, it seems to be. And it's, I don't think it's accurate. And I don't think it's accurate either. That's what worries me about it, that it isn't accurate. And I'm, I'm, I'm very concerned about it. So. Uh, well, we'll do our best, and, and I think you can certainly we, help in, in that future, vein. Please try to abide by our bylaws. You know, let me just. I wasn't going to say this, Kat, but if you're going to, one month, if, and we if you're going to keep pressing that point, now that we're off the item, this was agreed upon yeah. by the. Uh, but we did the, the same thing the last in February, and I objected then. But that it was I, we voted the same. Well, I'll day. let you speak, and then you'll let me speak. That was a mistake. I, I'm sorry, I voted for it because it was. I should have stuck to my principles. Okay. Of not voting and now the rest of us day. who are not principled, maybe I'll talk about this for a moment at the agenda planning committee. If the board had said that we couldn't do this this way, we wouldn't have. This wasn't a unilateral decision. We made the case that it's been going on for a year. We didn't see any objections. I appreciate very much the support for that. The major decision was February. Once the board decided, and I can't thank you enough for doing that, that these cut scores to get career and college ready were appropriate to do, that was the big decision. There were, there were articles on it all over the place. You gave direction then, in effect, for the for the team here that we didn't even have to expand the team. And, and if you really got into technicalities, if you remember what I said then, this didn't even have to come back to the board. This is a decision made by the board to do the cut scores. We decide what those cut scores are as approved by the state superintendent. But I didn't feel it was appropriate to not have this kind of dialogue that we've had today and to really test it out. So I mean, that part is healthy. But to, I just don't want to leave the feeling like we jammed something through his staff. This was agreed upon at the agenda planning, as Nancy decided, and, and I, I get your point. Uh, but I don't think this was I don't think this was like the one in the regular policy that you're describing, where the first time anyone has seen anything. But I, I I hear your point. I'm just I'm just saying that's how we have to represent each. We we can all do better to planning. provide the appropriate time for public scrutiny on big decisions. And I as I said, we need to. I agree with you. We need to do that, and let's work towards that. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, on the other hand, don't be too hard on yourselves because it's not easy to anticipate what issue will will suddenly uh, get people thinking about implications. Mm -hmm. So it, it's I, I'm not sure that you could have foreseen. Well, you're part of this too, Richard. So if we're <laughs> in the same boat together here. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Sure. It's a we. For what okay. it's worth, uh, <laughs> just I. Um, I want to make sure that I get the right takeaways. <laughs> um, so it seems to me that the, the guidance around agenda setting procedure and whatnot is really for the agenda committee um, when that group convenes going forward. I mean, to really protect and honor that part of the bylaws that require that things come up uh, discussion a month before um, action will be required. Uh, um, so maybe that's you know, and the rest of us can keep around it as well, but certainly those who are setting the agenda actually probably um, will be best best situated to, to serve as guardians of that, that process. Um, the second thing is, I, when we did it just in, in just now in talking about this, so I don't, I, to be explicit about the communications challenge, I don't know that career and college ready is the right label. It, it sounds to me as though it is not, right? I mean, so the point that Cassandra's making, I think, and don't let me speak for you no, um, for if this it. is incorrect, <laughs> um, is that one, uh, uh, the, what is that, what we are at risk of doing is suggesting to folks who, um, who hear career and college ready and don't really think about the nuances of it, uh, suggesting to folks that they're not capable of succeeding in college if they have not achieved this degree of readiness. Um, uh, and it, so there are kind of two ways to message that it occurs just off the top of my head that um, seem to me maybe worth thinking about. One is um, not about whether students are career and college ready, but about whether our schools are um, uh, the degree to which they are preparing students for right, um, careers and success in college. Uh, which is really actually what it is. Mm -hmm. um, school at least measure. For, for terms of, what's that? It is a school measure. It's not a school right. measure. Uh, 
so that's one way of really being explicit about the way that we're talking about this. This is not a measurement of an individual student's career in college readiness, but our school's uh, um, ability to prepare students. And then once again, not for career in college readiness, but for um, some other word around, what's that? Well, meeting the standards we've already set, but uh, what I'm trying to get to is a description of what those standards would lead to, which is high, you know, uh, the expectation would be first year academic uh, 3.0 at any, right? So it's not career and college ready, it's 3.0 at, at a two or four year uh, university. 50% probability. Right. That's true. That's what half other, won't. Depending on other mitigating even factors. This, even this says half won't. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So, I mean, it's, it, I was glad that got distinguished earlier. It took me a while during our work on this to really capture that. And I know this isn't easy, as many of you have said. But, I mean, I think when we think about it as a, I think that's really good advice, Dan, because it's, it'll help get at Cassandra's point if we inadvertently would make it look like a student measure. The student measure is already there. If people want to abuse it, they shouldn't. They should be given, guidance counselors should be given the kind of support that you would hope that had Cassandra been in that spot a number of years ago that she would have gotten the right support on that. But this is a school measure, and it's, it's based on how many, what percentage of your kids are proficient to the degree that 50% of them, or 50% probability that they would get a B or an A, 50% probability that they won't get a B or an A. So I, I, I appreciate your work on this. I know it, I know you had particularly in February, maybe more recently again, a lot of pressure on you. I think uh, we wouldn't have recommended it if we didn't think you're doing the right thing. We do. And I appreciate the differences on, on subtle issues in some respect, but not on importance. So I, I respect all the comments that were made. And, and I apologize a little bit, Kath. I'm only trying to clarify on the issue mm -hmm. of the agenda planning. We need to put it on ourselves, both both entities, staff and the board, at that meeting to decide whether or not it's, it, it's appropriate for the policy or not. I do think, uh, it's up to the board ultimately, but I think you have the license and when appropriate in that agenda committee to just say that doesn't make sense to do two months, you know, and, and exercise that. Otherwise, it's just a hard, fast rule that, that um, sometimes has a different, uh, you know, allow some discretion for the board that's on that committee. Mm -hmm. Eileen? And I would just comment that if, if the agenda setting committee finds itself in that situation and notifying the board that it's coming up and why would be extremely helpful because then people can ask more questions. And if anybody does due diligence, like Nancy talking to the psychometricians, that's helpful too if you can share it with us before the meeting. Just, and we did do that. Um, th there was a, a, a sidebar that went out. Uh, uh, because Amber Ariana had come up with a public comment and uh, some of us saw that. So perhaps what we should be doing on any issue that's going to have a high public profile is sharing that with everybody so that we're all on the same page before we get to the meeting. Good points. Okay. <coughs> Item L is approval of Michigan's position on proposed NASB public education positions and election of officers and I'm turning this over to Richard. Okay. If you uh, clicked on that thing, you were probably overwhelmed by the yes. 64 pages. <laughs> <laughs> and um, this reminds me a little bit of uh, the notice I get from AAA. I could go to the voter, I could go to the stockholders meeting, or I could just give them my proxy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. this, is an, <laughs> this is an invitation to give them our proxy and just approve what's uh, already what's been proposed here. If you drop down to page 53, the, the first. 52 pages are the <laughs> statements that have been adapted, adopted over the years. And candidly, I don't agree with everything there. You, you can look at this and do a kind of triage. There's, first off, the stuff that's so obvious, uh, like every school should teach, every school system should teach children to read, okay? I mean, I thought that's why we adopted schools in the first place. Um, and then there is the ideal that every school should meet every child's needs throughout P through 12 years and beyond. Okay, well, that's an ideal. Will we ever get there? I doubt it. I don't think anyone seriously. And then there's the, the, the middle stuff, which I think is more helpful in terms of defining issues or, or identifying prudent choices and things of that, that nature. Um, 
So taking a look at uh, the first recommendations that they have, additions, if you will, on personnel. And what and page are you on? I'm on page 53. Okay. There. Oh, yeah, there it is. So this is a modification of what's already uh, in the... Uh, this isn't live on the agenda right now. I beg your pardon? It, it is. Mm -hmm. I just called it up. And yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't load it. Not what you do line, is if, if you right-click on it, it'll say, do you want to open this in your web browser? And you say yes. The other one's open. Did I yeah, I know. That? For some reason it didn't, but that's how you do it. How do you get to page 53? You have to go down this side oh, so here. How is Las Vegas? The pages as they scroll by. To oh, the important oh. stuff. Well, I, I attended with two very <laughs> That's supposed to stay there, Richard. I didn't get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see the sign? Oh, oh. oh. oh fantastic. Abby smirking. Particularly when they're. Oh, excellent. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. And, uh, sorry. No, I have to. That was interesting, <laughs> though. We, we, um. Did you wear your uh, collar? The whole time. <laughs> remember. I think the first thing I did. Um, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Blackout uh, since then, huh? No, half, half of that was, half of that meeting was learning about the core um, curriculum, and then the other half, it was like you were sitting through a bunch of uh, sales presentations on various uh, various mm -hmm. tools or attempts or, or uh, you've got an organization with another that's only peripherally related to the uh, core curriculum, but that was their opportunity to tell you everything they were doing and why you should support the organization. Yeah. Um, so they had contenders. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not so much vendors so much as professional organizations that yeah. that were making the pitch. Yeah. Yeah. Um, very informative. Yeah. Abby was wonderful. Oh, she, uh, oh yes, definitely. Uh, represented us very well. Uh, in, uh, Translated for us. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steph, we can't load the current document. It's not coming up on the internet. I've Aren't got it on my. Phone. I've got it. Can you highlight the? John doesn't have it. Or, or do they need it? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, but right okay. click. Keep trying now, to open web link and browser. There it is. Uh -huh. Never mind, I have it. Oh, I did it six times. <laughs> Marilyn, huh? go to the agenda item. I, I, it just came. It did it? I had to refresh it like oh, okay. six times. I know what take on so we're down to voting for our officers. Is that where we are, Richard? I'm sorry, all this no, I've lost track. We I thought we'd take a look at the. They want us probably uh, modifications yeah. to the. Uh, and my, frankly, my recommendation would be just let those pass. But if you want to go over them, we can. Yep. So we have to authorize you to vote in favor of letting them pass. Yeah. Well, I, th I think that the. Um, I think, I we think that the positions themselves need an endorsement from the, yes. from right. the, the state board itself. Mm -hmm. And you will yeah. take that vote yeah. when you're there. I would report that, but right. it's not right, right. now. They will, yes. they will ask you to vote. Okay. Yeah, they will well, ask you to vote. Why don't we send the votes in now? Well, I, I, the last few times I've been there, they've taken the vote. Mm. Yes. And then on behalf of the state, you vote, you know, the state board, it you vote. It looks like the United Nations or something. If no delegates are attending. Right. So, mm. otherwise... Yeah. You're the delegate. You're of your it. Yeah. Well, the first uh, the the first position recommendation that they want you to endorse is on page 50. Um, the modification of the personnel section, educators for the next generation. They basically say that uh, traditional mode of teaching, where authority tells you what's happening, is out, and now we're going to do. I'm paraphrasing very broadly, but uh, now we can learn by uh, <laughs> game simulations. <laughs> so my recommendation uh, that we not adopt this is probably transparent. Uh, <laughs> but you may want to read it yourself. Uh, <laughs> are you talking about the personnel? Yeah. yeah. Richard, I want to commend you because it's not until page 55 that they talk about you sharing this with your board. So that yeah. makes you... <laughs> 
<laughs> I printed it all out because I didn't want right. to burn out my computer screen or my eyeballs. So. Yeah. Um, there is on page bottom of page 50 another uh, modification in personnel uh, that educator values should be built on clear professional practice standards and encompass curriculum, culture, individualized instruction, learning relationship, teacher to student, um, student to teacher, expectation to master for all, and creating a culture of trust, respect, and responsibility. Um, and uh, apple pie. I, well, that too. <laughs> um, this is one of those statements which I think is, is thoroughly unobjectionable. There may even be some value in uh, <laughs> having uh, an exhaustive list. Uh, well, it has the three basic words in it, so it can't be bad. You know, classroom, family, and community. Okay. <laughs> this is the problem of coming up with so national... What, what, I'm happy to accept your recommendation assuming right. you're going to flag ones that are so wildly uh, controversial that we can scrutinize them. Okay. Um, if there's, I guess, I guess my thought is uh, not to endorse these unless there's the will of the, the body to, to do so. Not to endorse them. And your reasoning for not endorsing them would be? Well, in the first case, because I think the... Um, the trendiness mm -hmm. here. This, I mean, I think instruction will always be a mixture of various methods, and I think that the direct instruction, which is effective, especially with uh, uh, difficult learners, will never be uh, out of style. And uh, this assertion uh, in the personnel is, is, I mean, they want to embrace something good, but but it's an overstatement. Um, much of what they have in the points underneath. Uh, is is probably good and, and praiseworthy, but the justification uh, that the old style authoritative teaching uh, is not. Uh, I think that would be to a trade reason for a motion if we were to adopt that. Well, <laughs> you'll get Nasby's attention. <laughs> What is it that we would be adopting exactly? Well, they want. That are in red. I mean, is it the is it the preamble or is it the given this transformation as we believes one through six? Well, NASB has already adopted the first fifty pages, mm -hmm. so now you've got mm -hmm. these modifications, which are the ones in red. Oh. Sort of three or four of these right? sections. And it's the entirety under that red heading. Yes. Okay, that's what he was getting after. Is it the okay. entirety or the? So. Or the bullet points underneath. So we really object to the first sentence. I think these, <laughs> position, these positions come from the re, as a result of the study groups that yep. have been held. So they've involved, you know, a lot of thought and, and uh, mm -hmm. member, member input. So and I'm you can have the opportunity if you would like, if we would like, we can, we can, we can offer a variance of language before that meeting and have it have it um, passed out because I think I think that their their idea is that we shouldn't be limited to this kind of model of teaching is valid. Mm -hmm. I think that it would ne to say that it would never be appropriate probably is invalid. Yes. Um, so b by a slight language change, it might be, but might be approvable. Yes. I think they could just. I mean, literally, if they lost that first whole sentence, it would just read, the Internet and efficient global communications have fundamentally changed how individuals access information. You ripped my mind. <laughs> so I was just going to say, let's get rid of the first sentence. <laughs> that would, bam, gone, done. Yeah, exactly. Oh, now, what page was that? That's on page 50. Top of the page. Under D, educators for next generation learning. Get rid of the first oh. sentence and start with the Internet and efficient global communications. Well, I was on 51 already. It's up a little further. Up a little further. Get it a little further, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, here we go. Take this sentence yeah. out and just start out the internet and efficient global communications. Okay, I'll federally change it, yeah. That's true. <laughs> um, so are we voting on these separate or? We could. It depends on what the band leader suggests here. 
Well, I think uh, my recommendation would be that if, unless you want to spend time, we can parse these. Uh, but um, my thought was that um, uh, if there's amendments that uh, we can agree, uh -huh. um, that um, someone should uh, move an adoption, that particular amendment, and otherwise if it's, um, if it's not, then well, then I move that we would get, strike the first sentence under D on page 50, the traditional mode, model of education, and instead start the paragraph with the internet and efficient global communications. Support. Moved by Nancy, supported by Cassandra. Any further discussion? Okay. Maybe if they just said it's not always appropriate. <laughs> Well, yeah, but if you just get rid of it, you don't, because the next sentence actually yeah. says that. Yeah. It's fundamentally, fundamentally changed how individuals right. access information. Any further discussion? Okay. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, same. Great. Cool. Okay. Moving right on. Okay, we're on uh, <coughs> page 51 of uh, position. No time to wait. Uh, school improvement on school structure. Um, says eliminate barriers for student learning based on calendar seat time, fixed physical boundaries, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I think the thought is good if it's implying that actually uh, calendar seat times, fixed physical boundaries are tools that enable us to instruct. And it's easy to see a window uh, as, as you know, the window, is, if we open the windows, more people will come in. Well, surprise, you open the windows and more people leave. And <laughs> that's, um, um, so, I, so I have uh, problems with characterizing the, the tools that help us do our job as barriers. Well, except this is the very conversation we've had at the state board table for about a year and a half now, and it okay. goes along with everything we've said. It so, does. at the risk of having people leave, which could happen any minute now, yeah. um, <laughs> um, I would suggest we just agree with this, just because it doesn't it doesn't go against anything we have discussed. No, it actually says what we've been talking yeah, about. Yeah, exactly. I, 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 agree. I, I am attracted to the idea of stuff. following Rich's lead and rejecting We're just everything. Gonna for the same reason that my wife, who went to University of Michigan, always votes for like the craziest person she can identify for the MSU trustee board, I see. Oh, just to screw them up. You know? oh, yeah. exactly. oh. The, the communist, vegan, you know, uh, <laughs> candidate. Uh, so I kind of like this in the message. Is he trying to tell us something? I mean, yeah, look. Yeah, I was gonna go. I was gonna go simpler and just say put screens on the windows. But. <laughs> I move that we accept <laughs> <laughs> and support the no time to wait creating contemporary school structures for all students today and tomorrow. Support. Yeah. I support it. Support by Agreed. Supported by Dan. Any yeah, further I'm okay with uh, <laughs> this sentence just because I don't think it actually characterizes the calendar seat time and fixed physical boundaries as barriers yeah. um, so much as barrier. It, it suggests that there are barriers that result sometimes from those. Yes. Well, the only thing I would add is the same thing as the other one. I would just say that we want to create environments that actively promote and support innovation within and beyond the school walls. The point, though, of having the other part of it is that you're contrasting it and saying it's time to, to stop confusing limitations. It's time to stop thinking that, that limitations are actually, um, what were you, what did you say, windows? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe, maybe it's appropriate. I, I can go either way on this. I could just start saying, start it by saying, create environments that actively promote and support innovation within and beyond the school walls. Agreed. Right. So um, let's see. I don't think it makes that much difference. Can we just make that a friendly amendment? To the, is there such sure. A thing? Why not? Mm -hmm. Friendly amendments don't don't actually exist, but we're going to make them exist. All right. <laughs> Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Oh, same. Next. <laughs> hey, the next one is on page 50, uh, rather 52. It's, it's confusing because the computer says you're on one number and then the uh, type right. number on the pages are different. We're to, uh, to page 52? 52, 52, 52, position from common ground. 52, 
on uh, education in the military, meeting the needs of students, and it basically calls for a cooperation collaboration uh, between schools, school agencies, and military, um, as well as uh, using the uh, armed services location up to ten battery um, in, uh, as diagnostic test uh, when this is uh, available, usually through our. ROTC programs and Recommendation? Um, we could adopt this. I, <coughs> it's one of those things where it's, it seems to me kind of common sense, but uh, in, in one sense unnecessary, but in another uh, sense maybe. So moved. I support. I think it's important to understand the history of this. This has been a long time, two and a half year, three year, would you say, Kathy? Yeah, uh, process with NASB to develop this long standing relationship with the armed services and their vocational aptitude and, mm -hmm. and testing practices that have been proven in California to be so accurate. And so it's it's been a long, long relationship with NASB to develop this, to come to this point of view. So NASFAB is the best tool in the world for vocational aptitude yeah. assessment. So if there are a way to ever use it in the in the outside the armed services, it'd be phenomenal. Well, and that's what this is all about, yeah, is to do that. Right. Yeah, I, I wasn't cra so crazy about the relationship, but since we've got it. <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. I think yeah. someone here said that once. <laughs> but it's not what it's not. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and put the screens on the windows. <laughs> Oh, we're getting yeah, goofy here. <laughs> no, it's, it's interesting. I, I didn't know this until relatively recently. When my husband was in high school in Detroit, he was in the ROTC, which just amazed me. And what? He was, yeah. Oh, my he gosh. He was the captain of whatever. And <laughs> he went to field day at what was then called Maven Field. And so he went oh, and boy. That was a long time ago. Yeah. Well, maybe it was Briggs Stadium then. I'm not sure. But anyway, uh, he met, a, he was at Central, and he met a, Fellow who was the captain of the T of the ROTC at South Eastern or Southwestern, whatever the school was, they met. This is 55 years ago, 60 years ago, whatever. And on the field, it, and, the, and they had become they became friends. They're still friends today. Wow. <laughs> and then the other guy was president of the Michigan Bar Association, big you know, big time. While he is a judge. They really did very well, so maybe yeah. there's something to this ROTC stuff. That's all I was going to say. That's the quote of the day. I didn't day. think of before. <laughs> <laughs> maybe there is. <laughs> there we go. You're still here. All right. <laughs> Cassandra, please. No, I'm waiting for the oh, vote. Oh, I think it was moved by John. It was supported by Eileen. Any for? I didn't realize it had been moved. Yeah. They did briefly, but I, I didn't repeat it, so you, that's why. Uh, any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 I'm, I'm going to abstain. Uh, I didn't think you could vote Wally for this, Mary Ann. Page 53. The Wally story didn't. It did. Yeah, it did. <laughs> <laughs> that that's where we started. Uh, 53. Uh, page 53 is integrating school health policies and topics into state education reform units and uh, calling for educators to. Uh, get more health uh, <coughs> preparation, uh, integrate health and overall lesson plans like reading, health literature and English classes, <coughs> manipulating health and physical math classes, and genetic <coughs> learning with physical activity and lesson plans. Um, while I don't object to this, I, I am troubled by the implication of asking other disciplines to teach your, your discipline. I mean, it's, um, and it's one of those things where I think it's a good idea and it's worth listening. It's, it's, but I'm not, I would not be prepared to, to recommend it. Now, I, if, the, if our board here wants to go ahead and, and uh, thinks this sounds good and want to recommend it, I have no objection. But it's well, not I think this I fits would. in with what we were talking about. The cons our, our school health committee, our nutrition standards, our physical education standards, all of this. And what we, I don't know, we hadn't talked about integrating into literature, but we had talked about including it in the lesson plans for learning throughout their lesson plans. Question. Well, it says such as. It doesn't say it's yeah, required it to. You don't have to. Yeah. But it's, it's a good idea to include all kinds of stuff in, in teaching English. Richard, yeah. is this Reading. school improvement state longitudinal data systems part of this as well? Yes. Is this even legal? 
to yeah. collect that's an interesting health information on students. Is this what? Mm. Legal? The school improvement, state longitudinal data systems, we're talking about. Student health indicators I don't think it requires individual students' data to be recovered. I think it's group data that's not okay. identified with individuals. The devil yeah. is in the details. Sounds like individual. That one would give me pause. Yeah. It says data on student health. I see, here you go. It depends on how you read it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, so it's, it's obviously part of a larger... This is, this is it is. Vision, Several right? yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a modification of what's... Yeah. Yeah. So without knowing what else oh, is already there, true. I mean, I'm assuming yeah. there must be something that says, you know, within legal boundaries or consistent with... That's true. Yeah, I think it's okay. It is an assumption I'm making, but... Well, it is item J, so I'm guessing there's a few things before it. You would be correct. Well, I move that we support this. Well, thank you. Supported Support. by Support. Dan. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. 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 Both same. With relish here. Huh? I said with relish. <laughs> Opposed with relish? <coughs> yeah. Or with mustard. <laughs> or, no, seriously, I don't know if you have to record that. But did it pass? I'm not even clear. It now. did. It did, okay. All right, uh, then we move down to page 54 where you have um, elections. Now, if you look on page 54, you see that there is Stan Archie. I'm not the only reverend on a state school board. Uh, he's been uh, nominated for central area director, and there's no opposition. Uh, Secretary of Treasurer is Rob Hovis <laughs> from Ohio, whose background is in agricultural education, and then he went to financial services. Uh, hope he's doing okay. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and he is unopposed for Secretary Treasurer. Uh, and then in, among the president's elect, uh, you have a contest between Patrick Gita, who, who I think was at the um, Western uh, the core, hmm. Common Core thing with us. Oh, okay. Uh, and then Christy McKinley from Ohio. They are both attorneys. Oh, I think I know who this Patrick is. Yeah. Okay. And. Um, uh, I have two reasons to suggest Patrick Gita uh, from Rhode Island. Uh, mm -hmm. One is that we're already going to have somebody on the on the executive board is from Ohio, and if you read uh, Kristen's uh, statement, it's redundant and she repeats herself. Said that with a straight face. Yes, That's yes. Very good. Well, who does it all with a straight face? Patrick yeah. Gita, however, sent out an email in which he gave everybody's email addresses so that it was two screens of NASB member email really? addresses before you got to his message. And I am oh. I am categorically opposed to any attorney who is not smart enough to, <laughs> to conceal <laughs> those addresses. Yeah, well, good point. <laughs> They're both attorneys, so it's a difficult well, situation. You know, you know, he's an active, active, uh, active member, and uh, according to his statement, he's quite a yeah. uh, supporter yeah, sort of, like, of public education. I've sat on on uh, study groups with him. He's mm. he's quite well spoken. Oh. I think yeah. he's good. Mm -hmm. yeah. he is. I agree with the. Uh, right I move that we approve oh, Patrick oh, yeah. Gita and the others that are on yeah. Rob Hovis, Dan Archie. How how well could I? I like his statement better too. Um, for these offices. So it was moved yeah. by Eileen and it was supported by Marianne. Any further discussion? Uh, we should advise uh, Kristen McKinley to eliminate all uh, other opposition from her state should she run. <laughs> <laughs> All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same. Yay. Okay, terrific. Thank you. Thank Richard. you, Richard. And, and thank you as for the background on Yeah, well, issues yeah. I didn't expect you to kind of intuit that. I wasn't sending off good vibes enough to, for you to get that. <laughs> Helpful. You're welcome. Yeah, Richard set the tone for Comedy Central, so now we'll have our state and federal legislative report. <laughs> well, I'm going to continue that as she comes down here. I just oh. was looking through today's, uh, uh, somehow through, and this must be through intuition, 
Marilyn happened to be able to send us the latest uh, decisions made in the Senate today. And I'm just wondering if we're going to uh, take a vote on our legislative committee on the large carnivores third reading of exempting facilities accredited by the Zoological Association of America from the Large Carnivore Act. <laughs> <laughs> wow. These are important yeah. decisions. Should important weigh in on that. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> See what you could have had, Cassandra. Yeah. 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 <laughs> right. <laughs> You're the better end. <laughs> Hi, Elise. Hi there. Hi. Um, a couple updates from the report that's before you. One, I just got an email today, about 20 minutes ago that the House Committee on Education and Workforce, the U.S. Committee, will be holding a hearing entitled Examining the Federal Role in Public School Accountability tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. And uh, Hannah Skandera, the chief, um, one of the chiefs, I think, from New Mexico, is going to be one of the witnesses. So um, that is available online and then always on their website. They always archive it. So even if you can't watch it live, you can click, you know, tomorrow at 2 in the morning if you want, after it's done, or the next day at 2 in the morning. Mm -hmm. um, so I just, before I forgot, I wanted to pass that along. Um, <coughs> also, I just saw that 496 is closed, eastbound of Pennsylvania, so when you're leaving. No. Oh, oh, no. Thank you for the information. Yeah, that's the way I go. Very helpful. Great. <laughs> I, I try to fulfill all the needs. <laughs> you know, and for really those of you that around. remember, <laughs> no, no, no. I can do that. Accident that investigation. Yeah, I can figure that one out too. I don't know what that means. No, you and for those of you that remember Sandy Marlowe and Charlene Merrick, uh, they texted their whale watching today in Cape Cod. They had lunch at Mystic Pizza, and they hope we're having a great time. Yeah. I told them that they should find an internet cafe and be watching this meeting. That's so right. <laughs> they could be watching now. They might At the end be. of the day, we're getting punchy. Um, uh, first, the Senate this week is having the House, the, U, uh, the Michigan Senate uh -uh. this week is having a um, meeting noon on Wednesday, and they're hearing testimony from the Indiana State Superintendent and from the uh, administrator of a charter, a new charter high school in Detroit, uh, the Jalen Rose, Jalen Rose Academy. The Jalen from Jalen Rose, right? In person, yes. Um, so that's Wednesday. Um, this is all sort of preparation for them looking at charter schools down the road. Still, um, they're not taking votes at this point. They're still gathering testimony and hearing from various people on on different topics. So um, the uh, SBE Legislative Committee began discussing the parent empowerment education reform package a little bit on Friday. Um, we'll have analyses finalized by the end of this week. Oh, um, the discussion of the committee I thought was very good and provided already some, um, some insights that some of the board members caught it just in terms of things in the bill that just didn't make sense. Mm -hmm. um, uh, some that were kind of silly in terms of uh, uh, there was one about, um, th there's a provision in one of them that allows parents, if you have 51% of the parents of teachers of chartering a school, but there's nothing that says that that school has to continue. So the next year you could have a different 51% of the parents then take over that school and then another 51%. <laughs> so, I mean, some of it, but, but it, the point is there was a lot of insight and the two charter school, uh, Linda Forward and Mark Itram from the charter school office were at the meeting and stayed really late. And um, it was really, I thought, a great discussion. Mm -hmm. And um, so I'm, as they're drafting their analysis, I know that they were incorporating some of the concerns that the legislative committee had, including some of the accountability issues that were raised um, by the board members that were present. Mm -hmm. um, Quick question around this. I'm sorry, is that? Sure. Uh, two things. One is, um, and this is actually just a question about the legislation. Is it true that uh, one of those bills would allow for charters to opt out of the state assessment and instead use their own measures of progress? Um, there's some language that I'm not quite sure what the intent was in one of them that I saw, and I had the same question because it, it seems to imply that if a school had standards somehow higher than the Michigan standards, I think what they were trying to say is they could also have another assessment to somehow address that. In addition to but I don't think that's what it says, and so that's one of the concerns, clearly, that staff has already pointed out, saying, number one, that would violate federal law. 
Um, and number two, um, we would want all of them assessed with the same so you can do apples and apples. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that is that was one of the concerns that was raised. Okay. And then just second, what uh, what kind of a track is this on? I mean, are, so I'd, I'm really interested in this and would like to be able to weigh in, particularly now that I'm not at a foundation any longer and kind of don't have that um, obstacle. Uh, and I'm just wondering how quickly you expect to see this package of legislation move um, <coughs> such that we don't end up, you know, missing opportunity to weigh in. And that was the discussion yeah, that, was that the legislature yeah. 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 participated in. How do we come to grips with what we're for, what changes, what uh, ornaments to this we want to advocate for in a timely way, mm -hmm. which is the issue of the moment, I think. Or things on it that we just want to shave out. Right. Yeah. What I had said at the Friday's meeting is my understanding is they're going to have two to three weeks of hearings, kind of like the one this Wednesday where they're going to take testimony. Um, uh, t this week is from specific people, but then it's going to be opened up to public testimony. Um, and I would guess that they would probably start voting on something soon after that, so probably three to four weeks out. And I think one of the things that um, uh, Lisa recommended to us that I think is wise and valuable rather than try and get in with the cattle call of the testimony that to individually go to those legislators that we have good relationships with who have an impact on the vote in other words on the education committees by individual board members maybe in groups of one two or three um, that that would be far more valuable than trying to get number <coughs> 27 on the list of those testifying which, having done both, I would agree with her, is far more effective at times. You get a real one-on-one -on -one that way. Um, it, it's more work, but it certainly is, is uh, something that I think was a good, good uh, recommendation. Along with that, once we have the analyses finalized, they'll include some suggestions from staff about things that either need um, policy issues that they have concerns about or concerns because it doesn't match up with federal legislation, that kind of thing. And so that may help inform um, your thoughts as you're um, going to speak with legislators. And so that's part of the reason I want to get those to you by the end of this week. So that and we had decided to set a date for our next, um, like within the next week, uh, another um, legislative committee meeting and we would invite anyone who wants to be a part of that, either by phone or in person, to be there because I think that's where we're going to come in as a committee. We'll come up with some recommendations to bring to the board for discussion as to how, and, and if we're looking at <coughs> then a special board meeting then too to, can discuss, bleh, to discuss those recommendations so that we can come up with something that everyone is saying off the same page at the same time. It would be helpful. So Dan, we would welcome. Have you said a, a day? Cause I no, we were going to do that here, remember? Oh, oh okay. Yeah. You know, if I can tag on to that, uh, I think... She wasn't on the call. Oh, I forgot. That's right. You weren't on the call. Sorry. Go ahead. Um, I think a couple of things that would be helpful is, um, I said it in that meeting, which I don't often do, but I was, I was really impressed with the discussion also. And sometimes, let's say Dan, particularly with your new role or any board member, but happened to notice something, don't assume we got it all and it may not have to wait for a committee meeting. I no. mean, it may be common sense that is this what they really, because what Lisa does often and I think that's why she was a great hire to come from with, with her background over there in the, in that house is what you just said. Often they don't even mean what we were alarmed about <laughs> and then you get it carved out before it ever happens. Sometimes they do mean an extreme piece that we might you know, want to, it, it starts to narrow this down, but I would invite any of you that are, you know, a lot of you are very interested in this and close to it and see something, and we wouldn't have to wait for a legislative, it doesn't mean we don't have a legislative committee, we have to have it, but you don't need to wait a quick call to Lisa or shoot an email and she could run it down. Mm -hmm. That's I mean, with the analysis, it's still right. a it's very, still very <coughs> especially with the timing, you'd hate to miss something big because of the timing. The, um, there's also scheduled a couple of joint house senate K-12 appropriations subcommittees. Those are the subcommittees that do the school aid budget. Um, they're having a couple of joint meetings. One of them is this week, September 15th at 8 a.m. 
and the topic is public testimony on the topic of alternative high schools. That was as much as the notice said. Um, when I asked ab about it, I think it, they said that's really broadly it was something the members wanted to hear about and I don't know that they have more specific intent than that at this point. Um, <coughs> Where is that going to be? That is in the House Appropriations Room of the Capitol Building, 8 a.m. on the 15th. What's the, what's the date? The 15th. The 15th. The 15th. Oh. And then next week, and this is all in your report too, next week on the 20th at 8 a.m. Um, in, I believe one of these has changed to 519 of the Capitol, but uh, since the time I, I wrote the report, and I can double check that for you, the second hearing is on, is on um, the agenda is on public testimony on performance-based school funding, which I think we've talked about here some, and it was part of the governor's um, education message um, in April, and I, I think the board has talked about it as well. Yeah. But the idea of having a piece a of bonus piece and for performance, mm -hmm. student achievement <coughs> growth rather than that at 8 a.m. as well. Yes. Okay. And that, by the way, Lisa and I met with the two chairs of, of probes on those issues to try to talk through with them conceptually that it should be on growth, not a raw score. It shouldn't be a deduct. It should be a bonus. I mean, they're still going to be the ones voting. But I think we had a. I, I think we. I don't want to say convinced as part of because they may have been there, but I think we helped under, help them understand why that's the way to go with this, and that's in, that's consistent with what the board had in mm -hmm. the uh, in, in your paper. Right, right. Um, apparently, the house uh, that bipartisan work group is going to continue. I, I thought it was only for the summer, but apparently they're going to continue on in Wednesdays. Um, uh, house education is not scheduled at this point for this week. Um, on the federal level, you'll note that I commented briefly about the Joint Select Committee on Deficit Reduction, and I did want to point out that there is a big push by the education advocacy groups out there, the National, NASB, CCSSO, some of those groups, to push that committee not just to look at mandatory spending, but at, or not just at discretionary spending, but also at mandatory spending uh, revenues, et cetera, when they're coming up with this 10, 15 year plan to reduce the deficit, that everything should be on the table mm. and not just carve out a piece and say, this is all we're going to talk about. Because I think the education advocates at the national level are concerned, concerned that that will disproportionately hurt mm. education funding. Mm -hmm. And so um, that seems to be consistent with, I, I went out to several of the different federal um, websites after I had heard that from uh, somebody at CCSSO to confirm it and I'd had seen it in several of the different groups all saying the same thing like please put everything on the table if you're gonna if you're gonna take on this big project take on all of it mm -hmm. at least and when you said Ed wasn't meeting <coughs> tomorrow didn't we hear and think my counterpart in Indiana on vouchers or something was that Oh, that was when you just stepped out. That's the oh, Senate. Sorry. It's oh, okay. Gotcha. The Senate Ed is meeting uh, Wednesday at noon, and they're hearing from the Indiana State Senate and from one of the new charter high schools that's opening this year uh, in yeah, Detroit. State Senator Indiana State Soup. Indiana State Superintendent. Yeah. Is that what topic is vouchers? Well, or do you think it's vouchers? That's a new superintendent. I don't know, I don't know who that is. But, it, but they've just they've just touted it and started it and it's gotten a lot of play so I was assuming uh, the invite we haven't yeah I'm not sure if it's specific to, to that or um, to Pavlov's push Senator Pavlov's legislation talking about um, um, opening charters more in general because I know that's also a big thing but I wouldn't be surprised if it was something about either vouchers or about funding following the student in one form or another. He's, that Jalen Rose is one of the four new high schools in Detroit. Is that part of Michigan Future? Yeah, they are one of the new I believe. And there are two charter schools and there are two public schools, mm -hmm. real public schools. Two district schools. Pardon me? Two district schools, DPS schools. Yeah. But they, I, I think they're that and they're the accelerator. They get some of the accelerator money, don't they, from Lou? They do. Yeah. The other charter school is not open until the following year, I understand. Right. And that's so Quarterstone yeah. School. That's one of the Clark Durant schools. Mm -hmm. For what it's worth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
That's all I had in terms of updates. Yeah. I don't know if there's uh, thanks, um, So I, too, I need to clarify, too, I think based on discussion, the legislative committee intent that I had in terms of so some confusion. I wanted a legislative committee that would be inclusive of anyone who wanted to play. But just to reiterate the discussion with Nancy and Cassandra, the legislative committee, as I have um, charged it, is um, Nancy as chair, Cassandra as her co-chair, uh, Marianne, Kathy, and Eileen. A five-member legislative committee, which I gather is, uh, is um, doable mm -hmm. by our uh, bylaws. Mm -hmm. So that's the legislative committee with open invitation to others to phone in or participate. So I, I very much would like, to, you know, as you all have been working, to have this committee, particularly with this package, uh, we need to find a mechanism by which, with staff input and recommendation, our thoughts by email and phone, have that committee come together and say well, what is our um, set of recommendations and advice given this package in particular and future packages. So we need to figure out how to have that discussion and then have a full board uh, approval of what could be some simple mm -hmm. but specific resolutions about what we like, don't like, what we think should be in or out of this package of uh, things. There may, be, there may be some pieces that we can't come to a um, bipartisan agreement on, but there's a lot I think that we can. So I'd like to see us try, certainly. And just in case people hadn't noticed, it was a female rich committee. Well, that means it's a <laughs> thoughtful, <laughs> and no doubt will be successful and effective. <laughs> and so uh, just to be clear, if we have things that we'd like to make sure end up on the agenda for conversation, right. we should email them to you. Yeah, please. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Any other comments or questions for Lise? Okay, great. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thank you. Good job. Uh, consent agenda. Move approval. Support. Support. By John. Supported by, catch that. Kathy. Kathy. Aye. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, same. Motion passes. Comments by state board members. <laughs> uh, as of Friday, I'm officially the chair of the National Assessment and Governing Board's Reporting and Dissemination Committee. And that means that I have to read the report several times before and then fight with uh, the National Center for Education Statistics. This is actually true. Uh, but I've been doing that for quite a while. What's different is that I now get to sign off as to whether the nation's report card can be released by the National Center. Oh. 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 Which is an interesting interplay for a public board with a governmental agency, not unlike this one. Mm -hmm. In the sense that there's tremendous power uh, to, the con to the conventional mandate for the governing board to actually say that's not right. It's interesting. Uh. You wouldn't think that they wouldn't come there. Mm -hmm. If anybody wants to not have the nation's report card come out, I will <laughs> listen to those appeals. But <laughs> <laughs> not necessarily yield to we should e We should email you, yeah. is that it? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah. Just take the form as possible. Awesome. Even put on yeah. Facebook. Yeah. Right, yeah. there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have a blog going. Right. That's <laughs> great. Congratulations. For us, uh, are we good? We are okay. Good meeting. Thanks for your. I, hope so. I would like to, if I could, ask those that are officially on the legislative committee to hold on for a second and pull out your calendars so we could decide when it is we're going to meet. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. I got to get rid of the.